Yeah. Yeah. You look great, incidentally. Uh, hi. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Hi. <laughs> okay. oh, me too. Hi, everybody. Okay. We're we're in the in the well in the well of creativity and Tree Sisters Well of Creativity and uh, Anne Shannon is joining me and us today for a interview with a creative seating change and Anne for sure is one of them and I've been blessed to be able to watch uh, part of her journey at least um, as she's been actually publishing her first book and I'm just so excited to have you here Anne. Oh, it is so good to be here. And I love the fact that you're doing these interviews and really promoting the vision that we all have and the uniqueness of what, of how we're conveying the essence of our own spirit and experience. Because to me, that's the key to really changing the world. Wow. Well, yeah, that's, that's really my honor to, you know, I was just uh, came through that these, these wonderful women like yourself that I'm speaking to, on a daily basis now for over two years, almost three years, I have to share it somehow. I mean, you know, it's just so inspirational. And so I'm kind of calling it Creativity Speaks. Ah. And um, because I feel like it's like you were saying, it's speaking through us and it's time to just share that and inspire others to allow it to share their vision and let it speak through them and through their essence. So a little bit about Anne. Anne is a tree sister, and she's also a water carrier. And for those who don't know, that means that she's contributing a percentage of what her sales are in her books to tree sisters to plant trees. So this is how creativity is seeding change. She is also a lifelong eclectic student of mythological and mystical traditions. She is a nature lover, a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother, and she lives in Portland, Oregon. And along with all of that, as I've already said, she is an author, and her new book is called Entering the River Naked, Field Notes from the Feminine Wild. And I am just so honored, really. I mean, like I said, um, I saw some of the early notes on the book, and um, privileged uh, to to do that and um, to meet have met Anne in person when we visited Claire. It was so and great. <laughs> that was party, <laughs> painting party extravaganza. And I'm now just so honored to bring bring her voice to all of you. And um, so, if you could just start Anne by by sharing, how did Two Sisters call you? How were you called? Well, you know, I really feel like all of my life, it, it, it absolutely fits everything that ever opened my heart, that ever, um, you know, exploded my consciousness in being a woman. And it reflects and expands that. And a friend of mine wrote me and said, because she knew about my book and she was my, a beta reader for my book. And she sent me the uh, link to Tree Sisters and I got into it and I just, you know, I, everything about it just was like, it was like booming with yes, 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 yes. And then when the meditations, the meditations that we do with Claire, it's like, I have never found anything that opens up the mythic dimensions of the feminine the way those meditations do. So I, um, I couldn't do, I, it just felt like everything that had healed and built and enlarged my, the life of my soul was magnified in Tree Sisters, and it was all leading me to this. It spoke to every level that, of anything that ever recharged and excited me. So. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can share some of those same, same feelings with you. And as far as your book and how it was growing at the time when you connected with Tree Sisters, and how would you say that 
that creative voice that was coming through you, how is that um, possibly brought into more focus after uh, joining with Jesus? Well, uh, you know, I mean, I carried the awareness of the climate crisis, but I don't think somehow I didn't really see a, a venue for participating. Well, I was craving and praying for the capacity for the change. This so fit, because I see that Tree Sisters in a way has a capacity to deliver on the capacity for change, transformational change for the planet in a way that nothing else I've ever come across. I've participated in a lot of um, growth and, you know, consciousness uh, groups, but never anything that was as whole as Tree Sisters. And to me, the, 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 my experience in the woods that basically Entering the River Naked is about, you know, carries um, it carries this mythic feminine, the experience of the mythic feminine and the, and the, and what it, how it awakens us. Yes, it awakened it in me, but it somehow carries it to that. I knew, always knew that this wasn't just for me. Mm. And it, I felt like it has something to offer the collective in these times. Mm. I've been editing this book for 24 years yeah. and and it just feels like totally it inspired me as to the time and place and um, the the uh, the womb of it held the possibility for change in a way it just it just seemed perfect right right Ooh. I'm kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you're not you're not babbling at all I mean this is this is a, a, a creation that has been like you said incubating inside of you for 25 years and you know it's it's extraordinary when something is wanting to be birthed in a creative way through the universe you know it's got its own timeline and you know i'm sure you had many thoughts why isn't this company coming to together yet and and all of this and and you know but you trusted and you held you held it and you coveted it and you cared for it and I, I do believe, you know, that uh, along with you, that this is the time. And so I, I want to ask you, what do you think? I mean, we're going to get into, you're going to do some readings for us, and I'm mm -hmm. so thrilled. But yeah. I, I want to ask you, what do you feel that your book, what is the, you know, one single feeling that you have that it's what difference it can make? It, you know, I know personally for me when I've read it is how it, it, it connects to my, to, it connects me to nature, first of all. I mean, in, mm -hmm. in the descriptive ways that you speak about nature, it, you are automatically transported wherever you carry us to. It also just connects me to my, you know, like my wild abandon. Like there is no, nothing that is outside of what my possibilities are. That's how I feel when I'm reading your work. What would you say? That, that messages for me it is that nature has this intimate way of reaching out to us and healing us and speaking to us and revealing the deepest most beautiful heart at the at the heart of of not only ourselves but of all life and that, that that is an ongoing stream and it'll be unique in every one of us, but it's, it's a call to that. It's a call to the reader to enter that. And it, and it speaks to, to various dimensions of it, but it also is an entry point into the mythic dimensions of nature. If someone has not experienced that, I think, I mean, I don't know, you know, maybe not, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I suspect, it, yes. and that I actually feel that is uh, what it has to give. And, and maybe somebody doesn't know what mythic is, mm -hmm. what, it, what I mean by mythic, but to me, there is this, um, the heart, the heart of creation, 
the heart of life is inherently transformational. It is inherently expansive and sublimely, perfectly beautiful at its essence. And it is unfolding like the thousand petal lotus of the a Hindu tradition in the Eastern that speak of the thousand petal lotus. And so to me, it is that, that thousand petal lotus capacity of nature to lift us, lift us out of all of our suffering, all of it. And I'm talking all of it. I, I, I mean, I'm just blown away by what's available to us when we really open our hearts to nature and let it speak in its way and move us in its way. So uh, that's what, that's my prayer. And that my prayer is that the book would reach every person that it is meant to move that way. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I, I, you know, second your prayer. And, uh, you know, I believe with all my heart as well, as long as we are opening our hearts to nature and, and really loving the lover in nature back. I mean, na nature, earth, she's a lo our lover. <laughs> She's right. Every, she's everything. Yeah. And I do. And I do want to say one thing too. Yeah. That that mythic dimension, that the the magnitude of the energy of it, mm -hmm. to me, is the only thing that is going to really have the capacity to shift the planet. Mm -hmm. And so that, to me, is like the promise of Tree Sisters, because Tree Sisters delivers that, and. And all of us in our artistic souls bringing forth what, how that's moving and stirring in us and in the artistic community that you're trying to create, that you're serving as a, uh, the, the, the godmother of, you know, that has the capacity for transformational change that doesn't have to be all heavy and duty and fearful because the power and magnitude of it is as large as the universe itself. Yes. yes so that agree. is the hope. It is. It's the creation energy where all is possible. Yeah. And and we can relax into it and allow it to come through. We don't have to claw for it. It's there. Right. And yeah, that I'm just I'm having chills as you speak, and I. I I feel a little selfish at this moment because I've already been able to read your book. So I want to share your readings with everyone. Oh, sure. Um, I'm going to just read a little bit about from the actual, from the cover and I'll bring up the cover here so we can okay. see it. Okay. And then I'll have you share. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, it just, it just takes a minute for it to react. There we go. All right, so this is the cover of Anne's book, Anne Shannon, and I'm going to read a little bit from it, uh, the back cover. <clears throat> the Entering the River Naked Field Notes from the Feminine Wild, a memoir mapping the wilds of one woman's heart in hot pursuit of the sacred. In Entering the River Naked, Field Notes from the Feminine Wild, Anne Shannon faces down her core fear her failing marriage and career, and moves to the forested foothills of the Sierra Nevada. There she begins nightly sojourns through the woods that often last till dawn. As she lays claim to a majestic and tender new life that mirrors the ecstatic beauty of the earth and sky around her. Shannon's journals, mythic dreams and poetry leave a trail of exhilarating glimpses into the power of nature and the unbridled feminine to inform and to heal. With echoes of Clarissa Pinkola Estes, Adrian Rich, and Susan Griffin, entering the, na the river naked field notes from the feminine wild leaves us craving more accounts of women giving free reign to the deepest impulses of the heart. Oh, it's nice to take a nice deep breath on that. It's so beautiful. <clears throat> and I love the cover. Where was this picture taken, Anne? Uh, well, actually, I searched every 
uh, stock photo on the planet, I swear, uh, uh, of rivers, forests, moon, sky. And uh, this is a combination of two photos. Um, a friend of mine does astral photography, so the Milky Way is hers. And the, uh, the foreground of the forest bordering the river uh, was from a, a stock photo that the sky in that was the Aurora Borealis. Mm. But this was the sky that I saw every night in the, in, when, when it was clear in the mountains in the, in the Sierra Nevada. Oh, I love yeah. that. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to you, and if you could, you know, just uh, describe what the reading, what part the reading is from, and then uh, please. Uh, this is a reading from uh, the chapter, Re-Entering the Body of the Mother, and um, it's, it's just speaking about what I'm experiencing when I'm going out into the forest every night. So, if I tell the truth, I do not know why I come out every night to walk in the woods. Tonight, my mind runs ahead of the beauty all around me, looking for something to hang itself on, something it can put its arm around and name. But this is unnameable stuff. To walk in the woods with moonlight drenching every leaf, amid a noisy sea of cricket rhythms and the high whispering of trees, is to be mystified by levels and nuances of beauty too numerous for the mind to absorb. They break upon my body, my mind and heart with a steady constancy here, coming in feather-like intimations of other realms that softly brush at the outer edges of one another and of me, pushing me into new territories. These woods are giving me a stream of breathless glimpses into other realities. As I stand bewildered before a moonlight dusted sheen glowing on a stand of saplings, or am caught in the dimension blended mysteries of the thickly arcing body of an ancient oak whose arms sweep up with the joy and magnetic grace of a goddess, I am receiving initiation. The woods are speaking, drawing me back into the original forgotten language. Often I stand with my arms around the massive trunk of a great she-mother oak with my heart and all of its longings pressed into her, praying. I feel her take my prayers up through the great rainbow arcing curve of her trunk and send them gently soaring through her branches out into the bowl of the night sky to the farthest reaches of the universe. Sometimes she will take me all the way into herself and I know she is teaching me the language of her being, and it is becoming part of me. So I let myself farther down into the currents of her silent speaking, absorbing through my body what my mind cannot comprehend. So I would go out and I would walk the forest each night, and then I would write what I experienced the next day in the morning sitting in the forest. So, and here's another one. This is also from, this is, this is the period in the book where all through my life, nature has spoken to me and it, it kept me from going totally insane. But all the while I was like living through this intense emotional turmoil and, term and torture basically. And, uh, but, the, but there was the, the wind and the sky and all of that uh, speaking to me and, and, and awakening me to the beauty and possibility of what I knew I craved in life. And so then when I moved to the forest, all of that just opened up to a full rip. <laughs> and it was great. <laughs> I just let go and it was fun. <laughs> I love it. This is, this is when I, the re-entering the body of the mother is a chapter where I'm getting into that full depth of the letting go. 
And this one is called Forest Interlude. The steady gurgling irregularity of a small forested creek bed makes its way through the pine, singing softly past each rock, large and small, and each browning fallen leaf strewn in hapless perfection. The late afternoon sun filtering through the trees reveals a painted dance of light flowing along swirling rivulets of current. It's all so beautiful, something to come home to, to come to rest in, to be taught by, to go inside of. My eyes and heart trace each rock and leaf, each clump of moss and grass, each root and stump, but that is not enough. I ache to touch and be touched by all that is here, to smell it and feel it reaching into my bones. I run my hands hungrily along each smooth curve, each cold and sharp chipped edge of rock, drinking in each splotch of color, each black, gray, and green lichen etched scar. What hidden life, what burning lies buried in the center, I wonder at one deeply burnished blood rose heart of massive stone. And in the midst of this revelation of beauty felt and found, a lonely aching pulses through my chest, like that for a lost beloved who has been away too long to bear. I crawl into the large, hollowed out circle and curl up, letting her hold me like an infant in the lap of its mother as I let my body's longings sink down into her center. So. Okay. <laughs> I could just curl up right now and just listen to you <laughs> read forever. I love, I love being read too. Oh my God. But your, but your words just take me there. I mean, I, I was right. I was right in there. Oh, uh, good. That's what I thought. That was what I wrote for. Yeah. I, you know, what, what, what occurred to me is I can't wait for the movie. <laughs> like I'm just seeing it all and, and oh my goodness. What an experience. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to go back to stop share <laughs> and oh my goodness. Um, it's going to take me a minute just to come back to the real world here, but, um, and I'm just, I'm so thrilled really to mm -hmm. have you with us today and you open my heart just like she does, just like the earth does, you're her voice and when I hear you speak those words, it's, you bring me right to her and I know that's the experience that a lot of people will have when, when they read your book and Thank you. Remember the movie you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start thinking of what actresses and it should be should be Anne. Um, <laughs> Stumbling through the forest at night like a drunk woman. <laughs> drunk on ecstasy, no drugs. <laughs> No drugs, just ecstasy and nature. I, I could play that part really pretty well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, for everyone who, you know, I know that you're putting together a new website and you're going to have a beautiful launch and, and it's going to have a blog that will have, like, probably just all this juicy stuff to wake up to all the time. And it, in order to get on that email list, if anybody wants to be, which you should, no. <laughs> is prayer dancer and then the number two at gmail.com and also you can just you know facebook friend and if, if nothing else at ann.shannon.12 and um i'll you know i'll put some of that additional stuff in the notes when i post this in the well as well in, in the well as well but um thank you so much ann for being here and for mm -hmm carrying the, this message with you all this way so that we could read it and sharing it with us and 
um, you're inspiring, you know, facing the core of your fear. I mean, and nature, you know, holding you through that. It's an extraordinary tale. And um, go ahead. Yep. Well, thank you for being such an open heart to receive and acknowledge and to value all of what we are contributing, mm -hmm. you know, like in the, in the well of, of creativity uh, is, it, it's so beautiful. And I really, I mean, in this, I just want to say that in the seventies, that was my vision that I was like, what is it going to take yeah. to, to really change the planet? And I thought, well, we need a mainstream culture mm -hmm. that celebrates and speaks to that promise and beauty and, and opens people to that, that vision for our lives and our planet and that awakens them to that. And, and I, I don't see any better way than in the arts to actually begin to have it filter through the culture. Yes, so yes, thank yes. you for your vision and all that you contribute. Oh, thank and you. Uh, thank you. And seventy percent of all the book sa uh, sales yeah. will go to Tree Sisters. Incredible. So, of the net sales. That's yeah. It was yeah. this belonged to this belonged to the great mother from the beginning, and yeah. I want. I just like what's the point? But to get right. it back. Yeah, oh my so. goodness. Yeah, we'll have to figure out how many trees that would be that one book would plant, but it's a lot. And I will figure that out because I want everyone to know that, you know, that that's exactly the whole, the whole idea here, right? It's that circle of cre creativity that's coming through us to open the hearts and, you know, to sustain you, for goodness sakes, we need to do that. But you're turning around and, and planting trees with this work. And, um, yeah, it's what we're here for, and this is just the beginning. We're gonna we're gonna keep on writing this, and and I did want to mention that when I first read some of your galleys that you sent me, I was sick, and I was real sick. I had like super fevers, and I couldn't really do anything. I was having delusions, and reading mm -hmm. reading your your words, and I know you know this. It brought me back to just reading them was able to bring me back into the nature where healing existed. Oh, and, oh I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so, well, it's who you are, you know. Mm -hmm. So thank you, sweetie. Love fest. <laughs> yeah, love fest. <laughs> okay. Thank you so um, much. Thank you all. And thank all of y'all out there for being who you are, for having what you have to say mm -hmm. and moving forward with that in a way that's true to your heart because you. that's the answer to everything thank you for that encouraging those encouraging words Anne. and uh goodbye everybody we'll see you soon bye thank you thank you kathleen